Few things in life can be achieved alone. In business, partnerships are becoming increasingly success critical to each and every organization and company and to their leaders. I'm honored to welcome one of the strongest and long-standing business partners of Bechtle to this Partner Executive Dialogue. Welcome to Mr. Enrique Loris, the Chief Executive Officer of HP, and to Michael Guschenbauer, our host to the Bechtle Competence Days 2021 and the Chief Operating Officer here at Bechtle. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Very nice to meet you here. Nice to meet you, Enrique. <laughs> Good to see you, Michael. Great. So maybe, Enrique, do you want to uh, speak a few words about uh, the partnership and what this partnership means to you personally and to your company? Sure. And, and let me repeat how thankful we are for the opportunity of being here and how grateful we are of the long-term relationship we have had with Beckley. Beckley is one of our most important, important partners, not only in Europe, but in the world. And we are very grateful of all the work that we have been able to do together during the last years. And especially during the last 12 months, with where everybody has faced so many difficulties, it has been an honor to be able to work with them, to continue to work together to satisfy the needs for our customers, while at the same time to continue to drive innovation and find new opportunities to grow together and to better serve our customers. So it has been a great relationship and during this difficult time has proven to be a very important relationship for all of our customers. Thank you, Enrique. And Michael, a few words from your side? Yeah, Enrique, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time for, for this kind of conversation and um, during our Bechtle Competence Days. And uh, I also want to thank you for the, long, for the long lasting partnership over so many years. Uh, full of success and full of challenges we, we mastered uh, in our joint partnership. Yeah. And um, I agree with you in all points. The last 12 months were uh, like a turbo for digitization and transformation for not only our customers, um, so also uh, for us and ourselves. Yeah. And um, in our partnership, we were able to help our, our, our customers during these very challenging times to, to keep the lights on and to keep the operations, the business operations up and running. And that's a, a very great success over the last uh, couple of months. And um, a German saying is that, um, that under pressure, coal transforms to diamonds. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Uh, and so many creative ideas were born in the last couple of months and um, to help our customers to master these very difficult times. Yeah. So I agree in all points with what you said before. Yeah. Thank you guys for sharing these perspectives on your uh, partnership. And Enrique, I see you sitting in front of this very famous building, the garage. Um, I assume it's a digital, virtual background, you know, but it looks really nice. And um, I was wondering whether you want to elaborate a little bit about a quote, a quote of yours I found on your garage website. I visit this website from time to time and, and I found that great quote of yours there. Um, the quote is, I am confident that if we work together to meet the challenges of this moment, we will emerge stronger and more connected than before. What is your take on that? Yeah, so yes, first of all, it is a digital version of the garage. It, I'm not far from it, but I haven't been there in a year, so I'm looking forward to the opportunity of being there again. And all of you are invited to come and visit whenever you come to, to California. I think what, what I try to say in the quote is how important both partnering is, and at the same time, how the changes that we are going through are an opportunity for strong companies like HP or like Beckley to become stronger. And I think this is really what the spirit of the quote is. If I, th if I think of what we have been doing during the last 12 months, first of all, we have been looking at the challenges that we have been facing, and by partnering and collaborating together, we have identified new ways of serving our customers. And Michael was talking about how fast things are changing, how fast digitization is penetrating every aspect of our lives. And this is an example of the type of challenges and opportunities we have found. 
At the same time, I think both companies have decided to embrace change and to use change to become better, to drive better results for our customers, to identify new ways of growing. And we also have been doing that together. And at the same time, something very important for both companies is that we have seen that the role that companies need to play in our societies need to expand and that we need to play a role not only to grow value for our shareholders, but really to protect, to defend, to help the communities where we, that we serve. And this has been also something that both companies have been very active and very strong. And when we look at the combination of these three things, this is helping us to get stronger and it's also strengthening the partnership that we have. Thank you for you know, this very strong pledge towards the meaning and the impact from partnership and collaboration between your companies. And isn't it the fact that many of your joint customers have this expectation that you support them to becoming more agile and flexible? And how does HP support that growing customer need? I, I think we, we do that in, in many ways. And first of all is we need to show by example that we are doing that as well. So by adopting more digital technologies and helping our, car, our partners and customers to do that, we are definitely driving and going in this direction. And we have seen that in the last 12 months, the acceleration of that trend has really happened all over the world in all the industries. We have also seen the opportunity of simplifying our internal processes so we make it easier for other companies to do business with us. And we have used the last, the last 12 months to drive a very significant internal change with the objective of becoming more agile, faster and closer to our customers. And third, we, for every company, culture is one of the most important things that we have because it really drives the behavior of our teams. And we have been driving a lot of change in our culture to move it in the direction of becoming more agile and more customer centric. And our goal is that by driving these changes externally, we will make it easier to do business with HP. We will be able to help our customers better, which at the end is, is what I think we need to do. Thank you. And Michael, can you give us an example how this transforms into product and service offerings that the two of you bringing to the market together? Yeah, as we mentioned, um, as we both mentioned before, uh, the last 12 months worked like a turbo in digitization and transformation in, in customer processes and, and structures. And uh, agility and flexibility are key success factors to, to, to master these times. And, and um, uh, it needs uh, very professional solutions um, where flexibility and agility are the key success factors to, to implement it in, in our customer structures. And one of these solutions are, um, uh, for example, are our, our professional desktop as a service um, uh, offerings. Yeah. So we transformed this desktop as a service offerings in complete managed workplace, modern workplace services and modern workplace concepts. Yeah. Uh, and, and in a very agile and uh, flexible way. So we can help our customers to master uh, these times. Uh. And another interesting te technologies, which enables fantastic solutions from my point of view is uh, 3D printing. Uh. Because, um, because I think, and I'm absolutely sure that 3D printing will find its way in many industries and in many business models and it enables complete new business models. Uh to help our customers to define new portfolio offerings and new offerings to their customers. Huh? And not, not only in prototyping, but also in, uh, in a small series production. Huh? And I'm absolutely sure it will be a fantastic time for, for 3D printing in front of us uh, in the next future. Thank you, Michael. And you know, great that you shared these examples, how your customers can benefit from the partnership and the innovation that's coming from this partnership can benefit from it really immediately. But let's stay for a moment, let's stay with this topic of flexibility and agility. But you know, let's look at it from a slightly different perspective. Um, maintaining this flexibility and agility often relies on your supply chains. 
And I want to take the opportunity, um, having you, Enrique, with us today here at the Bechtler Competence Days, to hearing your perspective on the current global uncertainties in supply chains. We have seen how vulnerable supply chains are these days through COVID, or you know, even only when heavy crosswinds, uh, you know, let a uh, super vessel grounding in the uh, Suez Canal, like it happened only a few weeks ago. So, Enrique, what? to expect in this in the future in this field of supply chains and how do you prepare for it yes i think we during the last 12 months we have learned a lot about the need to improve and to change the resiliency of our supply chains first of all when covid started in china we all learned the impact that having all of our factories and the factories of our suppliers concentrated in a country even if big could have. And we experienced shortages probably a year ago because of the fact that almost all factories were closed. And then as the pandemic made progress and we saw the increase of the demand on PCs and many other electronic components, we have started to see the impact of the difference between capacity and demand in the semiconductor industry. And this is a challenge that we continue to see and that I think we are going to continue to see for, for several quarters. It is really driven by the increase of demand that we have seen. As all of you have are probably experiencing, PCs have become essential. Every person needs a PC to work, to study, to play. And this has really increased the demand by more than 40 per The demand is 40% higher than what we were expecting a year ago and the current suppliers of semiconductors cannot cope with that, at the same time that they cannot cope with the demand they are getting from car manufacturers for producers of healthcare products. And I think we, in this area, we are doing a lot of internal changes to, to reduce the impact. We have changed our supplier policies to secure capacity with long-term perspectives. We are increasing inventory so we can be more agile in building products. We're investing more in short term to really drive and increase that capacity, but we will continue to exper experience these shortages for a while. We need your help in simplifying our offering so we can increase the efficiency of our supply chain. And down the road, what this is going to create is also the opportunity of producing more physical goods locally. And as Michael was saying, this is going to increase the adoption of digital technologies like 3D printing, like robots, like software-related manufacturing. So we will be able to produce and build products closer to where our customers will be that will re reduce the dependency on certain countries. Thank you very much, uh, Enrique, for sharing these perspectives. And good to know that you address the uh, challenge truly you know, in a broad approach. And Michael, I assume some of Bechtel's success is also related to your supply chains. So what's your take on this? Yeah, absolutely, Michael. So uh, managing the supply chain becomes more and more uh, of a success factor um, um, for, for us ourselves. Uh, and Bechtle sees that as a, as a core competency across all areas, uh, not only procurement, also inventory, warehousing, and the delivery, regional and international, because because um, our customers have also international reach and, and needs to fulfill these demands on in an international way. Yeah. And we built a broad and flexible approach uh, with a wide array of, um, of uh, distributor partnerships, of dropship and stock models, and uh, to be able to react to market needs uh, and external disruptions in our best possible fletcher, fle flexible and agile way. Yeah. So, so I think we, we both have our, our challenges in, in, the next, uh, in the next years because of all these uh, de demands and, and the increase in flexibility of our suppliers. So, so it will be a, a, a big challenge for the next couple of years, but a core competence of us to manage all these things. Yeah. And certainly another topic that you can eventually solve better together. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, gentlemen, we are coming to the end of our conversation. And Enrique, um, the times we are in are certainly unprecedented. Can you share with our audience why you believe that these are beyond all the challenges 
also good times for a new beginning and for a positive move toward the future? Sure, and let me say, I joined HP over 30 years ago as an intern, and I think the opportunities we have now in front of us make me, be, may make me more optimistic about the future than when I was 30 years younger and joined the company. And actually, behind me, I have the HP garage, the place where the company was founded, which shows where through innovation we all can go. And I think innovation is going to be the key word for the years to come. And I think there is going to be innovation across the board that is really going to transform how we live, how we work, how we play, how we interact with the world. And I really believe that this is a great time to be in the technology space because technology is really going to continue to play an even stronger role that has been playing in the past. I think that in the next 10, 15, 20 years, we are going to see in the physical world a similar change to what we saw in the digital world happening during the last 20 years. If we think about what technology has done, until now it has transformed how data is being managed, has transformed how data is stored, how we manage our data processes. In the next 20 years, it is going to transform our physical processes. It's going to transform how products are produced. It's going to transform how products are designed. So all of us will be able to get something that has this been designed and built for us. Technology and biology are going to merge. And we will see new ways of treating uh, diseases, new ways of building products to diagnose what maladies or what viruses we have around us. We are, and these, all these transformations are really going to have a profound impact in how we live, how we work, and we think are going to make this world a better place to live. But this also highlights the importance that all of us need to play, need to, need to provide to areas like sustainability. And I think when I think about the future and the role our companies have to play, we really need to continue to drive innovation but also we need to look at the impact we are having in the world and have a very balanced approach and make sure that we dedicate also time and investment to minimize or actually to have a positive impact in the world because this is really the heritage that we need to give to our kids. Yeah. Thank you, Enrique, for this positive view. Michael? So, Enrique, I totally agree what you what you said before, and and I also think it's great time to redefine the way we work and collaborate with our customers, with our employees, with our partners. And uh, I, I, Enrique, I want to thank you for the for the great partnership uh, over so many years, and I'm I'm really looking forward to a, to a fantastic future where we both can create a, a, a great in, impact for our customers and uh, how they work and collaborate with their markets. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very proud of this partnership and I'm really looking forward to the future. Thank you.